The Myth of Gimbal Lock, a look at gimbal lock, what it is, what it is not, how to avoid it, and how to create the unimaginable quaternion gimbal lock. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate what gimbal lock is, is not, how to create it, and how to avoid it, to provide hands-on experience with gimbal lock through software, and to train computer game programmers on gimbal lock and how to code it and to avoid it. Who cares? Engineers that design robots care. Um, gimbal lock is a situation that you can get into in robotics where you end up locking up a robot arm, that sort of thing. Uh, computer game programmers who want to move things in mathematical, imaginary 3D worlds uh, care when their objects start moving in really bizarre, weird ways and lock up so that they can't control them. What is gimbal lock? And here we've got the Apollo moon landing, um, where they actually had gimbal lock occur. A fourth gimbal for Christmas. About two hours after the Apollo 11 landing, which landed the first people on the moon, command module pilot Mike Collins had the following conversation with Capcom Owen Garrett. Columbia, Houston. We noticed you are maneuvering very close to gimbal log. I suggest you move back away. Over. Yeah, I'm going around it, doing a CMC auto maneuver to the pad values, roll 270, pitch 101, yaw 45. Roger, Columbia. Faint joking. How about sending me a fourth gimbal for Christmas? The drawing on the right hand side here shows a gyro. Um, that would be found on something like a NASA spaceship um, that controls orientation and you can see the rings um, around it um, that allow it to move freely those are gimbals those are what are called gimbals gimbals are the rings that you see in a gyroscope they allow the gyroscope to turn on one given axis. Um, so you need at least three of them to turn on X, Y, and Z axis, or X, Y, and Z axes. Here we've got uh, animation from Wikipedia that um, basically shows gimbal lock actually happening right there. You can see the rings completely unaligned right there and then it rotates and right there all the rings become completely aligned each one is controlling like an XYZ axis or pitch yaw and roll um, where pitch is nose up nose down yaw is nose left nose right and uh, roll is uh, clockwise or counterclockwise roll um, if you're storing your values in pitch yaw and roll um, you can see at some point they might all three be on top of each other all three values pitch yaw and roll uh, right here uh, perfectly aligned and at the exact same time their gimbals all uh, basically go into alignment right there so that's what happens with gimbal lock. You end up aligning all your gimbals so that one of them is completely unable to move. The, gimbal, the gimbals lock when all three are aligned on one plane. When this happens, one de degree of rotation is lost. The only way out of it is through the one axis that is able to move off of the 2D plane formed by the aligned gimbals. The myth. Gimbal lock occurs when you see Euler, or when you use Euler angles, and by that I mean matrices, and so you have to use the mysterious and hard to understand quaternions in order to avoid gimbal lock. I've heard this said or alluded to over and over and over in the game programming world, um, and it's just not even remotely true, and we're gonna look at why this is completely a myth. Um, but it basically says, uh, you have to use quaternions because quaternions are the only way to avoid gimbal lock and I'm about to show 
the elusive quaternion gimbal lock that you actually can have gimbal lock with quaternions and that you have gimbal lock with quaternions for the exact same reason that you have gimbal lock with matrices and the implication is matrices are bad because they cause gimbal lock which is not true the cause is not related to the matrices in fact you can even um, do the same thing with quaternions the truth gimbal lock is caused by the way you store orientation in three separate components such as yaw pitch and roll matrices can be used to cause or prevent gimbal lock likewise quaternions can be used to cause or prevent gimbal lock so now we will demonstrate that with a uh, XNA program that I wrote and the XNA uh, project, the complete project with uh, all the graphics and everything will be uh, available on the virtuallyprogramming.com website uh, for download. Um, but uh, now I will uh, demonstrate uh, this program which was written and designed to demonstrate gimbal lock. So here I have uh, my XNA program that is designed to show gimbal lock and I'll start the program. We already have the program in gimbal lock here or set up to create gimbal lock. Um, unfortunately Camtasia, which I'm recording this with, does not do hotkeys, and so I can't show you what I'm doing on the keyboard, and I really need to so you'll understand what's going on, so I'm just going to have to use the mouse to show you the keyboard here. So the program is set up with this um, arrow, uh, the blue arrow on the screen there, um, it's a 3D model and uh, the keyboard will rotate. This is set up for your standard yaw pitch and roll. We'll, we'll look at the code here in a second. Um, w, let's see, there we go. W and S uh, are pitch up and down and as long as this is horizontal in its original position all this stuff works. The D and A are yaw, and then E and Q are roll. So looking at the code, we have our game one CS, just your normal game file. Um, this is actually a pretty short and simple program. Um, in the code here, I comment to explain everything that's going on in great detail. I mean that's line 107 starting at line 15 so that's almost a hundred lines of comment right there just explaining the overall program. Um, here I have my uh, global variables um, your standard, standard graphics and sprite batch um, the arrow model, the blue arrow model, which the 3D model that I did in Blender. Um, that's the arrow FBX file over here. And uh, the arrows world matrix, the view matrix, projection matrix, um, this rotation class or the rotator class um, I set up for this demonstration um, in a parent-child kind of um, um, what do you call that? An object-oriented programming um, polymorphism, I believe, um, where I can switch in and out different objects or different classes um, that have the same interface, has the same input, same output, and so I can switch out code uh, very easily. We'll look at that closer here in a second. And then um, this is the speed of rotation, uh, the amount of pitch per frame, amount of yaw per frame, amount of roll per frame, uh, which can be changed to make things rotate faster. Um, here just kind of your standard screen setup and the initialization. Um, I had to do 
full screen false. Uh, I have to run this in Windows mode because um, Camtasia won't record uh, full screen correctly. Um, and then here we have the initialization. Uh, first, I just do a standard set up your projection matrix. Um, I do a very standard set up your view matrix um, to position it at uh, Z equals four, looking at the origin. Um, and then start out the arrows world matrix empty as a identity matrix. Um, here I've got options commented out um, with try different options. Um, currently it's set up that the rotation class um, is defined as a wrong using quaternions. Um, so this rotation class here um, is an instance of the wrong using quaternions um, class and all these classes inherit from the same parent and so to switch them out you can simply comment out one line and uncomment another and everything is changed out uh, just that one simple change of two lines um, will switch these in and out we'll go back to the way it was um, and then here we have the speed the rotation speeds um, in radians per frame, uh, how fast to pitch, how fast to yaw, and how fast to roll. Um, load content, extremely straightforward. That probably could be deleted from the code. It's not really doing anything. Um, here it loads the Arrow FBX model uh, into the uh, Arrow um, value variable. Um, and then the update. This is all keyboard control. Um, again, very simple code here. Um, we get the keyboard state. Um, if you've got an Xbox 360 controller hitting the exit button, we'll exit the program on the Xbox 360 uh, controller. Otherwise, the escape uh, key on the keyboard will exit the program. Um, and then the controls I just demonstrated, W, S, D, A, E, and Q. Um, so let's see, uh, W and S are the pitch up and down. So it calls the rotation class that we commented out or uncommented and uh, calls its pitch method and then sends it a uh, pitch angle uh, per frame in radians, uh, negative if it's the uh, W uh, pitch up and uh, positive for the uh, S key so let's see I think W will pitch down I believe and S will pitch up I believe um, and then D and A are the yaw so D is uh, clockwise and A is counterclockwise um, yawing and then uh, rolling uh, but it's it's set up so that this this the keyboard controls here will work with whatever class we've assigned to rotation class. We assign different classes there. And then the draw is extremely straightforward. Uh, clear the screen in your standard X and A cornflower blue color. Um, the arrows world matrix. Um, here we call the world matrix uh, method of the rotation class and say what is your world matrix because when you go to draw it this is an XNA model. XNA has a uh, built-in model class. Let's go back to the top and look at that. See arrow here is defined as uh, an instance of the model class. XNA has its own built-in model class that knows how to draw itself and um, knows how to do a lot of things um, so that you don't have to create your own model class and it just loads that arrow.fbx model and knows how to how to draw it and it's using here basic effect and um, 
going through each mesh in the model, there's only one mesh here, so these four, e four each loops are a little bit uh, overkill um, because there's only one mesh to be drawn, but it goes into each mesh in the model and defines how the basic effect is set for that mesh. Uh, this is all very standard stuff for X and A model drawing. Um, enable default lighting. Uh, it's not textured. We are using lighting. Uh, here we have to pass a world matrix uh, that describes where the arrow is or where our model is and how it's oriented. Um, you don't have a choice on that. You have to, it has to be submitted as a matrix, which is why here we call the rotation class, um, which controls the, the arrow on the screen, and um, ask it what its current world matrix is, because you're, I mean, we could take just this value here and, oops, <laughs> plug it straight in there, um, which would mean you could totally get rid of this. Um, I think the code's maybe slightly easier to read the way it is, but you could do it either way. But the whole point is that you have no choice. When you go to draw the model, you absolutely have to pass the position and orientation as a world matrix. Um, if you're using a quaternion, you're going to have to change it back into a world matrix so that it can be submitted as a world matrix here. Or if you're using y'all pitch and roll values, however you store it, the end result has to go into a world matrix. Um, and we'll look at uh, the rotation classes um, world matrix method here shortly. Um, and then you have to also pass a view matrix to describe where the camera is at and a projection matrix to describe how to project from 3D space to 2D space. And that is the entire game one CS code. That's that's all of it. So if you look over here in our project uh, solution explorer, um, that's all there is to this code. Program CS is standard. That's in all all XNA uh, programs. Um, we'll open it just in case you're not familiar with that. It's very simple. It's 19 lines of code, um, but it's standard. It all it does is call this game one CS. Um, the only other piece of code is rotator CS. Now, uh, again, I've commented to the nth degree, massive amounts of comment, so that you can go through and maybe understand this code a little bit better through comments. Um, all my projects for this channel, I'm going to try to comment like this so that um, it will be abundantly clear how the code works um, at the for every method um, I'll tend to describe exactly how the code in that method works, and I'll also try to follow the rule of keeping one to two pages of code, no more, no more than one to two pages of code in any method. So you shouldn't have more than about one or two pages of code that lacks comments. Um, I mean, if you look at this, I've got you know, a, like three quarters of a page of comment to mm, roughly one page of code and a good chunk of that is just declaring variables. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of comment here. It should be, it should make it very easy to, or it should do a very thorough job of explaining the code here. So, but we're going to go over it anyway. The I've got this public abstract class. This is what I'm calling polymorphism here, this abstract class rotator. And um, it's not used directly, but it acts as a parent for all these children classes. Um, and it says that all of the children have to implement these four methods, yaw, roll, pitch, and the out, which are input, and uh, the world matrix, which is output. Um, and the parameters for yaw, pitch, and roll are the number of radians per frame to rotate, the, the angle to rotate through uh, in that frame. And you can go clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on whether you give it negative radians per frame or positive radians per frame. So then we have all the children here, and um, 
Let's start with the one that uh, we're currently pointing to, which was the quaternion something wrong, blah, blah. Wrong using quaternions, I believe. Let's go back and look. Yeah, wrong using quaternions. Um, so this one is the one that shows, demonstrates gimbal lock using quaternions. And uh, you can see I've got this quaternion rotation. And we feed it yaw, pitch, and roll values, which are the input parameters. So what we've got going on here is we've got, uh, where's the uh, input parameters? Okay, we've got, okay, this is a class. The whole thing is is a class. I was thinking of it as a method there for a second. It's not, it's a, it's a class. Um, and so it has the following variables, um, which are private and can't be accessed directly, which are the yaw value, the pitch value, and the roll value. So it's storing the yaw, pitch, and roll as three float values, which when you first start game programming, you're probably going to be tempted to do that because it sort of kind of makes sense in the beginner's mind. Um, it doesn't really, and when you see how badly it fails, you'll um, start questioning how this ever made any sense but at least it's pretty understand it's pretty easy to understand what yaw is it's pretty easy to understand what pitch is it's pretty easy to understand what roll is and it's pretty easy to understand angles even if you don't understand angles and radians uh, it's easy to convert radians to deg degrees and degrees to radians and back and forth so even working with radians isn't that hard because you got you know uh, methods and whatnot that will convert back and forth between radians and angles. So it seems fairly intuitive. And then we have to use the override and define these methods uh, because this inherits from the abstract rotator class, its parent, which forces it to define yaw, roll, pitch and world matrix methods and all it does is it takes that ro rotation in radians and combines it with the current yaw value or for roll it takes the input and uh, combines it with the is that right I don't think that's right roll should go to the roll value right I'm pretty sure I got that backwards. I'm going to change it just so that uh, we, uh, we're on the same page. I think that was a bug. It won't matter, um, really. We'll still get gimbal lock. We'll probably get it on a different axis, which might actually be bad for the demonstration. Um, I don't know. I think this is the way it's supposed to be. Worst case scenario, we change it back. So anyway, it's, it just adds the pitch to the pitch and the roll to the roll and the yaw to the yaw. Um, you're just updating those three float values. And then when you say, give me the world matrix so I know how to draw this, um, it's going to create a quaternion. It's going to take those three values, yaw, pitch, and roll, and create a quaternion. Uh, which, if you don't know what quaternions are, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you really don't need to. Um, they're uh, just think of them as black boxes, or just uh, it's going to hold an orientation, is what it's going to do. It's just going to hold the orientation, um, and we'll call our quaternion rotation. And then the output has to be a matrix, so we take the quaternion and convert it into a matrix and put that as the return value for the world matrix call. So we're just turning those three values into a quaternion and no matter what you do it has to end up as a matrix. So um, we're going to prove that when you do this you can still get gimbal lock. Let's run it. Okay let me find my keyboard here. Okay hopefully this is on the screen. 
Now I've messed things up a little bit. Let's see, we've got uh, probably going to have to click on the screen there so it'll get happy. There we go. Okay, so W and S have now become um, roll. I don't know if that's right or not. Um, let's go back and double check the code. I may have to start this whole video if um, it gets too crazy. Yaw, pitch, roll. Yaw, pitch, roll. Okay, this is... I'm pretty sure this is right. I don't know why I had that backwards earlier, but at this point, I think it's right. Anyway, so... Let's see, we'll start with W and S. And that's calling pitch. You know that's calling pitch. Let's see, go back to update. It is. It's calling the pitch method. Oh, yeah, I know exactly why it's doing this. Um, so it's called pitch method, which adds to pitch. And that's what it's doing. The problem is the the arrow here was oriented for the other situation, which is probably why I had it backwards. It, it really doesn't matter for the demonstration. Um, we'll still demonstrate it, but um, pitch means, you know, to roll, in this case, along the x-axis, and that's what it's doing. I, I should have had the arrow start out aligned with the z-axis, and then this would make sense. So, I mean, that's obviously pitched down if you think, I mean, from, from our perspective, from the camera perspective, not from the perspective of the arrow, but from our perspective, that's pitch up, that's pitch down. Um, let's see if we can get yaw. Okay, that, that makes sense. That's yaw and a. Okay, and then this should be roll, which from our camera perspective is correct. Now, let's see. Right about here, I think, is where we're going to start having problems. See, everything was working fine. Ah, <laughs> it's a little bit hard to do this with the mouse clicks. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Okay, there we go. And then, come on. <laughs> you can see on the keyboard I'm clicking and it's nothing. Nothing's happening. What's wrong with it? Okay, that's pretty much about right. Okay, and so let's see. Ah, there it is. Um, we got the EQ, right? E and Q are doing side to side yaw at the moment. Come on. And D and A are doing yaw. This is gimbal lock. We're in gimbal lock now. So basically E and D are doing the same thing. Come on, if they work at all. There we go. Um, and Q and A are doing the same thing. That means we have lost one degree of rotation. We have the ability, in fact, let's bring, bring it all the way around, 360 degrees. Just show that all 360 degrees, we're trapped. We're trapped on this plane. We can't get out of this plane. Um, this is supposed to be our roll control and it's yawing. And our yaw control is also yawing. And so our pitch control, which was actually doing sort of a um, roll, really, is the only thing that still works. It'll pull us off this plane. And in fact, that's the only way to get out of gimbal lock, is to get off the plane by using the one degree of rotation, the, the one method that you still have left will get you out of the plane. Once you're out of the plane, you'll, you'll be out of gimbal lock. See, E and D are actually doing something different now, although 
you, you go from the original state we started in where you're not in Gimbal Lock at all, and then you start moving towards Gimbal Lock. C, E, and D are doing something slightly different. Although we're, yeah. See, this is just rotating around the Y axis. And this is rotating around the arrow's own um, Y axis, basically. And so if we get them down on that plane, then the two axes align and the actual y-axis and the personal y-axis become the same. This is gimbal lock and I've just shown that we're doing this using quaternions. Okay, let's move on because we got a bunch of these to look at. Um, what's the first one in the rotator here? The first one right here, wrong using matrix. So this, this let's look at this one. This one's basically the one that um, people always accuse, or the one where people always accuse matrices of gimbal lock. You know, you, if you use a matrix, you're going to have gimbal lock. Um, let's go to that one. So we have the same thing here. Uh, notice we have the same thing where we're storing yaw, pitch, and roll as three float values. And we're feeding them. Again, I've got roll and pitch uh, reversed here. You can change it just like I changed it in that other one. Um, but it's set up this way because um, initially the values will look correct. No matter what you do, once you get into gimbal lock, it's not going to work. Um, you can do it forwards or backwards or, or whatever. Um, let's uh, let's do it this way first, and I'll show you that either way it's the same thing. So this one's set up to make a little bit more sense uh, initially. Okay, um, here's our keyboard, and we have the A and D key, which should yaw for us. Oh, come on. Um, I think I may need to click here and select. I may need to focus my game window. Yaw values. That's what you'd expect for yaw. And pitch. That's about what you'd expect for pitch. And roll. And that's about what you'd expect for roll. However, it's set up so that the gimbal lock occurs on the same plane. Um, we, um, you can control which plane the gimbal lock occurs on. Uh, you cannot control, I mean using the method that we're using here, you cannot control the fact that we have gimbal lock, uh, but you can control which plane it occurs on. And so if most of your movement only needs to be on two planes, then this is fine because you can just make your gimbal lock plane be the one that you're not using or the axis that you're not using. Okay, so we have that same situation here where Q, or no, sorry, it's not Q. Get back on the plane. <laughs> okay, it should be D and W. Yeah. D and W are producing the same motion. S and A are producing the same motion. We're, we're locked on this plane. Again, we're in gimbal lock. Um, because we should be getting three completely separate rotations, yaw, pitch, and roll, when in fact uh, we're getting yaw out of both yaw and pitch. Roll is the only one left which will allow us to roll out of the plane and uh, once we're rolled out of the plane then we should be able to get all our movement back yaw pitch and roll
And if you download this program, you can kind of play with these movements and, you know, experiment with it and see that, uh, you know, I'm telling you the truth here. It's, uh, I'm not, uh, not setting this up for, you know, just to make it do some specific one, one trick thing or whatever. Uh, you can look at the code and play with it yourself. Okay, so let's look if I changed those values to just see what's going on. Um, the initial setup there really um, worked well, but technically these are wrong. So let's correct them and see what changes. Um, let's see, I'll need to rebuild. Okay, let's see if I can get the keyboard back on the screen. So here's, let's see, come on, pitch, pitch, yaw, yaw, roll. It's it's doing it from our perspective, and, or the camera perspective, instead of the arrow perspective. But it's still the same thing. Watch. Once we get down onto this plane, it's still going to be gimbal locked. Because the problem isn't whether we told pitch to roll or yaw to blah, 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 whatever. The problem is we're storing it as three floats, yaw, pitch, and roll. I'll show that here as we go. Yeah, okay, so we're in gimbal lock. Ah, uh, okay, that's the one that gets us out of it. So, yaw. Yaw. <laughs> Uh, that should be roll, but it's yaw. That's also yaw. So nothing gets us off the plane except for pitching out of it. Pitching out of it in either direction, really. Um, once you're pitched out of it, um, it'll go back to working again, where uh, roll there is different than yaw here. Okay, we have several more of these to look at, so we'll move on. Don't close that because I'm going to need it in a minute. Um, but the code's basically the exact same as before, except for no quaternion. We just take the yaw, pitch, and roll values and turn them straight into a matrix, which is what a lot of beginners do, and then they're like, oh, it doesn't work. I've got, you know... Um, gimbal lock and it's all because it's a matrix and blah 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 it's not because it's a matrix it's because um, it's because of this right here this is what's causing the gimbal lock we'll look at that a little bit more Let's see wrong using hand build matrix um, here uh, we're doing the exact same thing that we just did um, except instead of building the matrix in one statement where I just tell I call the create from yaw pitch roll um, method of the matrix class um, to create the matrix there here you know the question is well what if you build three rotation matrices yaw pitch and roll matrices using the create from axis angle um, we're basically turning a yaw value into a yaw rotation matrix and a pitch value into pitch rotation and roll and turning it into roll rotation and then we take those three rotation matrix matrices and combine them um, into one world matrix to be returned which for new programmers starting out, this is probably how they're going to try to do it. So this may look familiar. Um, let's make this one the active one. This one is wrong using hand-built matrix. Okay, this one's active now. Let's rebuild and start up. Okay, so pitch, pitch, yaw. If you get it perfectly lined up, it works a little bit better, but 
doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. If you're almost on that plane, um, it'll gimbal lock. See, we're on that plane, except for we're not rolled. We're not really on that plane. Because the problem, the gimbal lock is occurring on the, uh, what is it, the XZ plane here. And we started out on the XY plane. So once we get into this XZ plane, it doesn't matter how you get to this plane. I'm just trying to get it exact here. Once you get to this plane, you're gimbal locked. D, W, uh, S, uh, A, S, let's see, D, we'll go all the way around 360 degrees just to prove that, you know, it's 360 degrees all the way around. You're gimbal locked. The only way to get out of the gimbal lock is at any point uh, roll out of it, which is the one degree of freedom you have to move out of the plane. So that produced gimbal lock as well. Um, so now let's look at the right way to do it. If I can get this window to have focus again. The right way to do it using a matrix. Let's, uh, let's go take a look at the code. Right using matrix. Again, it inherits from the abstract rotator class so that um, the interface, the input and output, is exactly the same. Here, instead of storing it as three floats, we're going to store the orientation as a world matrix. So, um, what is this right using matrix? Oh, that's the constructor for the class. Um, so when the class starts up, it will make that world matrix an identity matrix, which is an empty matrix. Uh, if you watch the matrix video, I covered that. Um, but it's still being an abstract class is required to have these four methods, yaw, roll, pitch, uh, world matrix as over, override methods. Um, and so when it's told yaw by so many radians per frame, it's going to create a rotation matrix out of that rotation and combine it with the uh, world matrix that is currently storing the orientation uh, by multiplying and then restore the results as the current uh, world matrix for the model for the arrow. Um, so the position and the orientation, the direction it's facing, is stored as a world matrix here. Um, it's if you're not real familiar with matrices, this may seem really weird, um, unintuitive, and hard to understand um, because you know what yaw, pitch, and roll basically are. You can imagine, you know, 90 degrees yaw and 90 degrees roll and 90 degrees uh, pitch, but imagining you know, you open up a matrix and look at the values inside, what direction is it facing? I have no idea, I can't tell. Um, the, the matrices are just kind of harder to understand what's going on inside them, but you really don't have to. You really don't have, you don't need to care because if you initially set it as an identity matrix, there's, the the matrix is basically pointing down the z-axis at that point. Um, it's aligned with the world axis at that point. And um, then when you call one of these methods, you pitch or roll, you're going to unalign this matrix with the XYZ world axis. Um, the matrix, as shown in the matrix video, basically has its own private XYZ axis um, that are mutually perpendicular just like the world axis and it's going to rotate that private axis um, to store the orientation, to store which direction it's facing. Um, you could also use this to store position but in this case we're 
not changing the position we're just changing the rotation we're changing the direction we're changing the orientation we're changing the direction it faces and the way you do it is the same we've got to create rotation z create rotation y create rotation around the x-axis again we covered that in the vector and matrices videos where um, you have uh, three separate rotation methods um, to rotate in in 3d um, there is no method to you know rotate in 3d you have to do 2d rotations in 3d to get a rotation um, that's covered in again in the vector and matrix uh, videos but otherwise it works works the same we take a rotation on an axis and we convert that to a matrix and then we combine that rotation with the current orientation which is stored in the world matrix by multiplying and then we restore the result as the current orientation hopefully that sounds pretty straightforward because it really is just that straightforward I mean look at how many lines of code here it's it's like nothing um, this is very straightforward very easy to do once you understand the concept until you understand the concept this you may be blown away by this um, for somebody who's never seen matrices used before this may kind of blow your mind but um, once you get it this is really all there is to it I mean it's it's really just this straightforward um, and then when you call the world matrix method to get a matrix to submit to the graphics card so that the arrow can be drawn to basic effect you basically just return the world matrix it's no calculation nothing this world matrix right here stores the models current facing its current orientation so all you have to do is just return it um, you're changing it when it needs to be changed through the yaw roll and pitch methods and um, storing it immediately so at any given instant this world value here stores the orientation it stores the world matrix that says how that um, arrow is oriented in the 3d world and again we're using the same calling I mean the keyboard stuff it's all the same it's no more complex than it was before because we're it's exactly the same we're calling that rotation class um, which is assigned here we're calling right using matrix we're we're taking an instance of right using matrix and assigning that to our rotation class object and then we call the rotation class object and when we press a keyboard button we tell it to pitch yaw or roll by a certain number of radians per frame and it does it calls those and it's one line of code <laughs> it's it's so unbelievably simple if you're if you've never seen this before you're um, probably kind of blown away and wanting to think that it's more complex than it really is and it's just really not that's all there is to it it's this in my mind is the way that you should do this that you should store orientations I don't like quaternions and yaw pitch and roll are a disaster um, quaternions I, I, don't, I don't dislike quaternions I just um, I slightly prefer matrices over quaternions I've seen some arguments for using quaternions over matrices but so far I prefer matrices for everything other than spherical linear interpolation which we're not getting into here but if you were doing uh, skinned animation um, you would need to interpolate between matrices and you can't do that it, you there's no way to interpolate between matrices directly I mean you have to you have to decompose the matrix and break it down to its raw format and then um, uh, what's interpolate then you have to interpolate uh, the raw values and then rebuild the matrix it's really ugly whereas quaternions can uh, can even for spherical interpolation quaternions can be interpolated by the quaternion you don't have to decompose it. it and so the quaternions are much better for spherical learn slurp <laughs> spherical linear interpolation um, for slurp um, 
they're they're much better. But for most of the stuff that doesn't involve skinned animation, I prefer matrices, and because it's so simple, you can see it right here. Um, I don't think we've actually run this yet, so there we go. Um, we'll run it, and now we have pitch. Let's see how that's doing. Uh, we're from the camera perspective. Um, yaw. Yaw. And roll. Let's see. It's harder to control with the mouse. Okay, yaw. Oh, come on. There we go. And roll. And pitch. So the controls aren't doing um, exactly what I would have expected them to, because uh, I think it's from the camera perspective. But um, it doesn't go into gimbal lock. There's no plane on which it goes into gimbal lock. So you could switch the controls around. That also may be a function of um, the order that you combine the matrices in, which hopefully is what we're about to look at next, because I'm not sure what that next thing is, because it's been quite a while since I've looked at this. But all three, pitch, yaw, and roll, are doing completely separate things. They're doing what they're supposed to for a change. So this is roll around the z-axis. This is pitch around the x-axis. And this is yaw around the y-axis. And no matter what direction you're facing, that actually works. It never gimbal locks and we're doing it with matrices. And you can download this code and play with this yourself if you uh, doubt me. <laughs> you, I, I recommend downloading it um, anyway um, just to take a closer look at it and read the comments and whatnot. Okay, that was right using matrix. Okay, let's look at right local matrix. What did we change on this one? Okay, again, it inherits from the rotator abstract class. Okay, good. Um, this is doing the exact same thing, but it's going to correct that problem that we just had I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll correct the problem we just had because noticed I reversed the order of multiplication. Um, I'm creating the rotation matrix and then combining it with the world matrix and storing the result and I bet you that fixes our problems. I actually created, whoops, <laughs> uh, where'd my code go? Okay, here's the screen. Um, I actually created this program last year. It's actually been months since I've even opened this thing up, and I'm doing this video cold. I didn't do a practice run on this, so I'm almost as surprised as you are. <laughs> Let's see, the uh, pitch, that's not pitch. <laughs> oh, okay, think of it from the arrows perspective this time. Okay, that would be pitch, like you're in a spaceship or... The, the arrow is a spaceship, and you're telling your spaceship to pitch. That's pitch. That's yaw from the arrow's perspective. And that's roll. Perfect. Beautiful. And I bet you it still works no matter what we point, what direction we point it in. Uh, let's point it straight up. So we're still yawing from the arrow's perspective. We're still pitching from the arrow's perspective. And we're still rolling.
from the arrows perspective, although I would have probably preferred those roll controls to work backwards of that. Let's go ahead and pitch on over and get back on the plane. So you have to do all three planes to prove that there is no gimbal lock, but this is the plane that we were set to gimbal lock on. If I can get it back there, I'm going to cheat and use the actual keyboard. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to cheat and get this rolled so it's flat on the plane. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Um, yaw around from the arrow's perspective looks pretty good. And pitch. That one still works, so that's not gimbal locked, but that would be the one that takes off us off the plane, probably. So that one doesn't count. It should be roll that doesn't work, except for roll does work. No gimbal lock. This is what you want. You don't want gimbal lock. You want, first of all, to be able to control things from the perspective of the object, and second of all, um, to get consistent results without gimbal lock. No matter what you do, no matter what the orientation, the position, pitch pitches, if you can make the buttons actually press, <laughs> yaw, um, yaws, and roll rolls. Here we go, roll. There we go. It works. So you can download this uh, program and test it for yourself, but on all three planes, in all orientations, it works. And the key here was, number one, I stored the orientation as a matrix, and um, then we still had some problems when I was doing world times rotation matrix. By doing rotation matrix times world, um, it moved it to the, um, the arrows perspective. Let's go back to the one we did before, where we're using a matrix, but um, the results were still a little bit wacky. What was that? Close the window. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to build and run at the same time. Okay. Keyboard. Did I tell my keyboard to go away? There we go. Okay, and refocus on the game window. And I think this is from camera perspective. So pitch, uh, roll, and yaw. So there's no gimbal lock here because we're storing this as a matrix. If I can get it down onto the plane. Oh, come on. I'm going to cheat there, get it on the plane, and roll it. Okay, and then we do yaw, yaw, then roll, and pitch. It's it's working perfectly, no gimbal lock. The, the difference here is now when I pitch, I'm doing it from the camera perspective or the world perspective as opposed to doing it from the object's perspective. And so, no gimbal lock, but if you want to do it from the world perspective, this is correct. If you want to do it from the object perspective, this is incorrect. Let's go back take a slightly closer look at that. So again, when you do a rotation matrix times world matrix, that's going to give you from the object's perspective rotation. When you do world matrix times rotation matrix, um, that's going to do it from the axis, from the world axis, from the camera, really from the world axis point of view, uh, from the world view as opposed from the object view. Um, the only difference here is the order that you do the multiplication in um, the order that you combine the uh, matrices in. So this goes back to the mantra that um, the order that you multiply matrices in always matters. And one of the big things is it'll determine whether you're doing uh, things from 
the world perspective or you're doing it from the local object perspective. Um, it's easy to switch, just change the world around. And also notice that um, in C++ and C Sharp, we like to do this right here. And that is equivalent to this, I'm pretty sure, which means you're going to be doing things from the world perspective when you do this. And if you intend to do things from the object perspective, this will never work because it's always going to do it from the world perspective, which if you want the object perspective, that's not what you want. It doesn't work. So you'll be forced to write out the multiplication like this so that you get the order correct. Uh, whether you're using X and A, mono game, or um, C++ and DirectX, all, all that will work the same. It'll be the same case in all of those, and probably several other environments as well. Um, okay, so we, we looked at the impossible quaternion gimbal lock, where we took quaternions and we actually locked them, and we proved that using matrices you can completely avoid gimbal lock and never get gimbal lock or if you do it wrong you can get gimbal lock with matrices um, so let's look at quaternions now the right way to do things with quaternions and and probably where the myth comes from is that people do make mistakes with the matrices um, which I've already shown several ways that you can make mistakes with the matrices here. Um, and then they immediately think, or they start asking around and people start telling them, oh, you got to use quaternions. It won't work until you use quaternions. And so they go find out about quaternions and sh someone shows them the right way to do it with quaternions because I just, you know, I started out by showing there is a wrong way to do it with quaternions and the wrong way with quaternions is exactly the wrong way, exactly the same as the wrong way with matrices. But when they get introduced to quaternions, even though they have no clue what a quaternion is, which may kind of work to their advantage here, um, somebody shows them how to do it right and they're like oh well you have to have quaternions in order to avoid gimbal lock which is completely false not true at all um so this class inherits from the abstract rotator class the parent class again so we have the same input same output this is right using quaternions the right way to do it with quaternions now before i was storing the orientation as a world matrix. Here I'm going to store it as a quaternion instead of a matrix. But again I'm doing basically the same thing I did with the matrices. Um, I set it to an identity quaternion which is an empty quaternion which is going to be aligned with the world axis. It's going to point straight down the z-axis uh, initially uh, because of the constructor of the class. And then I've got the four uh, methods that I'm required to override and have in my uh, class here. Yaw, roll, pitch, and give me the world matrix. And um, again, the parameters are the same. We're telling it how many radians per frame to rotate. And then it's going to take that um, for yaw and it's going to create a quaternion, create from axis angle. Um, and this is the right way to do it as opposed to the quaternions we built earlier uh, where we just built one quaternion and then stored it as floating point values. Um, the orientation here is this should be from the object's perspective, I think, because of the order of multiplication. But it's just going to create a quaternion and then it's going to combine it by multiplying with the current orientation so the new rotation is going to be combined with the current orientation to produce the new current orientation and we're rotating around three different axes here up backwards and right for yaw roll and pitch to create three different rotation three different types of rotation quaternion but otherwise these three statements are exactly the same and then um, when we call the world matrix function 
it's going to return a matrix by using the create from quaternion uh, method of the matrix class where all it does is it just takes a quaternion and con converts it into a rotation matrix. Um, where if, if you had position here this might actually be a problem because the quaternion will not store a position, it will not store scale matrices will and the world matrix that you have to send to basic effect or to the graphics card to the shader does need to contain the position and the scale if you use scale which I would recommend you don't use scale um, and none of that is stored in the quaternion which is one of the reasons that I'm not super excited about using quaternions. I, I don't dislike quaternions. I mean, I, I'm showing you right here. I know how to use quaternions. Um, they don't bother me, but um, I just prefer matrices um, slightly more. If you know, if you can show me that there's uh, an advantage of using quaternions over matrices, it's kind of six of one and half a dozen of the other. But I. For everything I've done so far, most of the time there's a slight advantage to using matrices over quaternions. And for that reason, I slightly prefer matrices rather than using quaternions. I just don't see why to go why you would want to go to the problem of using quaternions uh, when you could use a matrix and get the same results or, maybe the same results a little bit more efficiently. Big problem with quaternions is that they only store orientations. They don't store position, they don't store scale. Um, and the other big problem is basic effect or any shader that you uh, call to draw something is going to require a matrix, not a quaternion. So you've got to turn this quaternion back into a matrix before you use it and combine it with the position and scale information that you lost. So the like I said, for slurp and a few other things, maybe there's some advantages to using quaternions, but most of the time I would suggest using matrices. But anyway, back to um, what we got going on here, the right using quaternions, um, pretty straightforward. Let's um, save and build, oops, let's run. I wanted to build, probably built it anyway, but okay, now run and I believe the order of rotation here was going to be from the uh, orient from the arrow from the arrows perspective it wants me to focus the window come on focus the window am I focused there we go and I was incorrect it is doing it from the world um, axis perspective Nonetheless, I bet you it will not gimbal lock. And again, you have to test all three axes to really prove that there is no gimbal lock. I'm going to use the keyboard to get this thing on the plane. There we go. Um, but I'm just going to test this one rotation around the Y axis. Okay, that's working as expected. That's working as expected, although that would be the one to get you off the plane. Cheat and use the keyboard. Get it back level with the plane. It's hard enough with the keyboard. Controls are a little bit too sensitive, and that works as expected. So no gimbal lock. It's doing it from the world perspective when I expected it to do it from the object's perspective, but it's not gimbal locking. It's working perfectly. Um, Apparently this is backwards from matrices, um, which you learn something new every day. I did not realize that quaternions worked backwards uh, multiplication-wise compared to matrices. I'm a little bit shocked. <laughs> I'm just realizing that myself. You learn something new every day. Um, Let's see, the other one should do it the other way. So the other one should be write local quaternions, and the local must be uh, meaning the local axis, uh, which means this is going to fix the problem, and do it the way that I expected. Yeah, this is it, write local quaternions. Let's uh, get the keyboard out of the way so you can see all the code. Uh, again, this stores it orientation as a quaternion. Uh, 
constructor sets it as an identity to start out with. It's probably set to an identity when you create it, but um, I'm not sure that it is. Um, you, if it weren't, if it were set to z be zeroed out or something, this might not work right because you might start from a weird starting. I don't know. It might not even be a valid quaternion if it's not initialized to the identity. But anyway, um, notice we reversed the order of um, multiplication here. That's all we changed is just the order of multiplication. Everything else about this is exactly the same as it was in the other. Um, but flipping around the order of multiplication um, will put things from the perspective of the object, from the perspective of the game object, which in this case is the arrow pitch according to the arrow's perspective, roll from the arrow's perspective, yaw from the arrow's perspective, and roll again. Let's see if we can get onto that plane and see if we can gimbal lock it. And of course, one more time, it has to be checked on all three axes to prove that it won't gimbal lock, but um, I set this up to gimbal lock on the XZ plane, so if it was going to gimbal lock, that's where it should gimbal lock. Plus, you know, I know that there's no way you could possibly gimbal lock this uh, method because the orientation is being stored as either a quaternion or a matrix, and gimbal lock is caused by storing it as three floating point values. Oh, come on. I'm going to cheat and use the keyboard and get it all flat on the plane. That's good enough. Okay, let's yaw and roll and pitch. It works. No gimbal lock. So, obviously you can get this to work correctly with quaternions, but you don't necessarily have to have quaternions to get this to work correctly. Uh, it's your choice. You can make it work um, and make it impossible to gimbal lock using quaternions. You can also make it impossible to gimbal lock using matrices. Um, or if you do it wrong and continue to store the values as yaw, pitch, and roll as three floats, it doesn't matter whether you use a quaternion, it doesn't matter whether you use a matrix, if you're gonna store it as yaw, pitch, and roll, it's gonna gimbal lock. And not only will it gimbal lock, but it'll be real weird in the way that it controls even before it goes into gimbal lock. Um, because you almost immediately start moving towards gimbal lock and you almost immediately start losing one degree of rotation uh, as soon as you start rotating and um, it just, uh, doesn't control very well and I think you'll see that with the code. And that's basically it. That's basically um, all the code we have here. Let's see if we can get it to do the weird gimbal lock, or show how it rotates weird. Um, we'll just pick one. Gotta pick one of the wrong ones. Yeah, let's wrong using the hand-built matrix, because that's probably the most right of the wrong. And let's see if we can get the keyboard up there. Okay, so we pitch, and that looks to be right, and we yaw, and that looks to be right, and we roll, and that looks to be right, but let's um, pitch around a little bit here. So we tested everything, and obviously, I'm sorry, we're yawing around here. So we're yawing, and then we're going to try to roll, and that works pretty much as we expected, except we're about to gimbal lock. 
the pitch does not work as we expected. Yaw and pitch are doing the exact same thing because we're in gimbal lock. Um, so let's get off the plane a bit. Right about there. So initially, these were working as we expected. This was yawing correctly, which it mostly still is yawing correctly. But the pitch, that's not really pitch. That's not pitch from the local object, and it's not pitch from the world coordinates. It's pitch from the locked gimbal or if you go back to the beginning of the video and watch that animation of how the gimbals come close they start out where they're completely separated and then they go flat into one plane well only when they start out are they actually three completely separate yaw pitch and roll the the moment that they start changing from that whether it's yaw, pitch, or roll, any of the three, if it changes, you immediately start going towards this gimbal lock thing where things just kind of go wacky. And um, it just doesn't control in any way that really is intuitive. It's not controlling from the arrow's perspective. It's not controlling from the world perspective. It's really controlling from those messed up gimbals. And that's what you're going to get when you use yaw, pitch, and roll. So download the code. It's at virtuallyprogramming.com. Um, I hope to uh, put a link to the download um, in the description for this video. Um, if you've got XNA, um, you can load it. It takes uh, Visual Studio 2010 C Sharp and... Um, XNA 4.0 uh, was what this was built with. You have to download the XNA 4.0 as a separate free download from Microsoft. You can probably still get the Visual Studio 2010 with C Sharp um, as a free download from Microsoft as well, although all this stuff is starting to get old and XNA is um, uh, discontinued, no longer supported by Microsoft. Um, you could rewrite this application in DirectX and C++. It'd be a little bit more code, a little bit more complicated, a little harder to read and understand what's going on, but basically it would be exactly the same and it would definitely work exactly the same. Um, this is really a math thing, not something specific to XNA or any other uh, game programming environment. And that is the mythical quaternion gimbal lock and um, how to avoid gimbal lock.